Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Brendan back again with another video and today we are doing a camera prep for an Ari Amira and I figured uh, I would bring along my camera and film the prep, film me putting together this pretty simple straightforward build and do a really simple crash course on how to operate an Amira for any of you who haven't or who maybe it's been a while since you've used an, uh, an Ari camera, whether it's an Alexa, a mini, an Amira, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, this is just a quick, like 400 times speed sped up uh, clip of me just putting the build together. So attaching a small HD seven inch monitor to the top, putting a gold nut battery on the back, um, running a uh, DTAP power cable to the monitor and then an SDI cable to the monitor. There's two SDI ports on this camera on the opposite side on the back. So this goes into SDI port two. And then in, the, in a few minutes here, I'm going to put on uh, a tear deck as well, which will go into SDI port one. But first, uh, slap on a Tilta Nucleus M wireless follow focus, uh, put a DTAP splitter on the back as well, which I forgot to mention. So DTAP splitter is really great for this camera. So you can plug that into the one DTAP port that's on the back. And then you have like four additional ports for all of your accessories. Um, here's my Teradek that I'm just attaching onto the side with another articulating arm, uh, plugging that into the SDI port one and then into the DTAP splitter as well. So those are all three of the accessories using on this build. Very simple and straightforward, basic accessories that you'll use on any camera build. Um, not much to it there. I'm gonna use a quick Velcro tie to clean up the cables a little bit. You'll have to excuse my uh, poor cable management skills. I never have the prettiest looking uh, cable management camera builds ever, so I apologize if anybody is cringing at how awful these uh, cable runs look. But anyways, uh, back to the Amira. So what I find is a lot of people who haven't used an RE camera or a RED camera uh, they get pretty intimidated and think it must be really complex to use. But the fact of the matter is these cameras are almost simpler to use in most ways compared to a DSLR or uh, an ENG style camera like a Sony FS7. Um, it's just very intuitive, straightforward. All the settings are right where you expect them to be and easy and quick to access. So we're going to go through um, basically how to adjust all the settings in the EVF and uh, all these buttons on the side of the camera on the body here. Obviously first, got to put in the memory card. That's important. There's two slots there. And here is the EVF. So first off the bat, you see FPS, shutter, ISO, and white balance. It's as easy as clicking that button above the setting and using the scroll wheel on the side to adjust the setting. Here's the scroll wheel. And then you press in the scroll wheel to uh, enter in whatever setting you want to lock in. So super easy there. Now the white balance and the ISO are slightly different. Um, you have four presets of white balance and three presets for ISO. So whatever your switch is here, this is your white balance switch and the one above that is the ISO switch. Whatever your preset, whatever the switch is selected, that is the, um, the setting that you adjust from the EVF when you're clicking that button. Uh, so same thing with the ISO here. I'm going to adjust between one, two, or three of the quick presets. And then whichever one I'm on, number three, when I hit set, that is the one that I can adjust. So that's basically how the ISO and white balance work and how those uh, quick adjust switches on the body work. Another switch to be aware of is the ND switch on the side. So this camera has internal NDs. That's right under the lens mount. So those are the basic camera settings. Now let's dive into the most important menu settings. If you hit this button on the side, go up to recording. This is where you can adjust your codec, your resolution, your project settings. Project settings is where you can adjust your project frame rate, your reel count. So I'm gonna set this reel count to one because we're uh, starting a new project here. So I want that to be set to one and then this is going to be used as a camera. So setting that to A. If we go back and back again into media, this is where we can format, erase our memory card. So I'm going to do that here. Um, because I set the next real count to one, it will set in the metadata that that memory card is memory card one. 
Um, and finally, the other important one is the user buttons menu. So this is basically where you can customize um, all of the customizable buttons on the camera. So there's four uh, customizable buttons on the body, one customizable switch on the body, and two customizable buttons on the EVF itself on the top. And as you can see, there's lots of different options you can choose. So now if we go up to the, the top of the EVF itself, all the buttons here, um, the first button, M, that is how you can switch to uh, your video feed. Then you have VF1 and VF2, those are your user buttons. Um, exposure, which is your false color, and peaking. Uh, and then of course the record button as well. But yeah, that's basically it. So that should definitely be enough to at least get you started. I know this is a really quick crash course. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will definitely be sure to respond. I'm hoping to do another video exactly like this on the Mini LF, so if that's something you guys want, then let me know as well in the comments. But yeah, thank you for watching, hope this helped, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.